you have to realize, and this is where we'll, we'll end our discussion just in general about hormones, is that oftentimes hormones will interact with each other. It rarely is it uh, a single hormone gives a single effect. Because the body produces multiple hormones that have the same targets. And these hormones will work with each other to affect the targets. Sometimes there's two really different kind of responses you get here, these two on the extremes. Sometimes they have a synergistic effect. You know what that means? That means that the, the result is greater than the independent parts, the sum of the independent parts. So you might think you get a certain amount of response with A and a certain amount of response with B, but when you add the two of them together, it's more than those two added together. So it's greater than additive responses. Uh, we, we see this in hormone uh, actions all the time. Uh, you can release one hormone and it'll give you a, a, a minor effect, and sometimes that's all you need. But then you add another hormone on top of it and you get this huge elaborate response. Uh, we'll see this especially when we talk about blood pressure regulation and things like that. We get a lot of synergism among hormones there to regulate blood pressure. Kind of interesting. Here. Antagonism, very incredibly common. In fact, there are few, very few hormones that don't have antagonists. And that's because if you think about it, antagonistic hormones are necessary to balance. Right? Sometimes you're going to have too high, you need to bring it back down. Sometimes you're going to have too low, you need to bring it back up. And we have antagonistic. Now the thing to keep in mind, synergistic hormones must be secreted at the same time. Antagonistic hormones are never secreted at the same time because they do what? Cancel each other out. Then it doesn't make sense for the body to release both of them because it would be just as easy to release neither of them. Does that kind of make sense? And so uh, that's something to keep in mind there. And there are a couple examples where we, ha we have what's called permissiveness. And I kind of think of this as more like a co-hormone kind of action where in order to get the full effect of hormone A, you need to also have hormone B present. So it gives it permission to react well. So like if you've got hormone A present, it'll give you a little response, but it's capable of giving you a much bigger response. B lets it give a bigger response. The way to think about it is B is probably affecting that affinity, probably affecting the degree to which the hormone can bind to the receptor. So in that regard, it's really similar to, to cofactors and coenzymes and things like that that allow for this enhanced binding. So they affect affinities. So the, we'll see examples of all of these in one case or another as we discuss specific homeostatic pathways in the body, specific physiology. Does that kind of make sense? So that's kind of a general discussion. Certainly, we've, we've, we've hit... Um, oh, 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 crap. Um, well, I'll just mention this. This is something you're working on with... Uh, uh, this is something you're working on with these endocrine case studies I've assigned to you here. Okay. Um, there are a lot of endocrine disorders. Um, and an endocrine disorder results where the hormone is not having the desired effect on its target. Now there are really three reasons that could be true. That could be true by not having enough of the hormone. That could be true by not having enough of the receptors for the hormone, right? And it could be that you're making a lot of hormone and you got a lot of receptors, but there's something about the structure of one or the other so you don't have the right affinity between them. Does that kind of make sense? Either of those three cases is going to give you a symptom that appears like you have too little or too much of a hormone. Does that kind of make sense? We don't know why, but any one of those three things could lead to what we would consider hyposecretion, which literally means too little of the hormone, but it could be because you also have too little of the receptor or not a high enough affinity, right? Hypersecretion is what we would call it if you have too much of the hormone effectively, but you can have too much hormone, but you could also have too much receptors or too high of an affinity and get the same response, right? Now, the frustration with hyposecretion and hypersecretion is just exactly that. Uh, an endocrinologist who's studying an endocrine pathology may not know which one of those three cases is the cause. Now, 
can they determine blood levels of hormones? Absolutely. For most, they can. Um, there's another problem with that is, is that the amount of hormone that's optimal for me is different than it is for Armin. Right? I mean, so it's not as it's not as simple as saying, oh, heart rate should be 72 beats per minute. Mm, it's not that simple. So I don't know if, if any of you have ever had an endocrine disorder or you know people with endocrine disorders. Incredibly frustrating because it's difficult to diagnose. It's difficult to prescribe the right treatments. They often will do what they call titers. So they'll, they'll titer on, like give you keep increasing a particular amount of a hormone until, oh, we're starting to see negative effects, it's too much, and then back it back down. And that might work for a while until your body gets what? Sensitized to it because your body thinks there's too much of this hormone out there, so it starts making less receptors. And then you have to give them more hormone. So you see it's a, it's a never-ending cycle until something gets, you know, for some reason the body starts working the way it is. Now, for some hormones, that's not as difficult. I mean, things like thyroid hormone and stuff like that are pretty easy to treat because they, everybody has roughly about the same level, and that's much easier to do, but many hormones are very difficult uh, to treat, so it's pretty frustrating.